What is your name, please? My name is Lord Marston Das. What is your name, please? My name is Lord Mark Dundas. What is your name, please? My name is Lord Mark Dundas. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real Lord Mark Dundas and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Now, here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much, and welcome once again to To Tell the Truth, brought to you this week by Arid Cream Deodorant, America's largest selling deodorant. Don't be half safe, be completely safe. Use Arid Cream Deodorant to be sure. Now may I introduce our panel. First is PB, our regular lead-off gal, Polly Bergen. Then there is DA, and you must admit he questions like one, Don Amici. Next is uh, M. Van V, better known as Monique Van Voren, talented actress, singer, holder of a master's degree in philosophy who is visiting us for the first time. And finally, TV's TP, our anchorman, Tom Poston. <laughs> By the way, those of you who saw our show last week may remember uh, Jean Rio, the French trotting horse driver who was here to drive a trotting horse uh, uh, Jamin, I think was his name, in the international trotting uh, race, the first time one has been held. Well, he won. He won it uh, at Roosevelt Raceway last Saturday. I thought you might be interested in case you missed it. Panel, will you please follow along now with your copies of this first affidavit as I read it. I, Lord Mark Dundas, am the eldest son of the Earl of Ronald Shea and the grandson of the Marquis of Zetland. I am a student at Cambridge University. I came to Canada this summer to work for a lumber company. I am currently working as a tallyman. My trip to New York for this program marks my first visit to the United States. Signed, Lord Mark Dundas. <laughs> and we have three gentlemen, as you heard, all claiming to be Lord Mark Dundas. Gentlemen, are you all comfortably seated? Thank you. Very well, let's start the questioning tonight with Don Amici. Don? Uh, number one, uh, when did uh, your title originate? It originated in 1848. 1848. Number three, when did your title originate? Uh, about 1450. Uh, number uh, uh, one, to whom was it given? It was given to my great-grandfather. Number three, to whom was it given? Um, the title of, of Dundas? Yes. To whom? What was the name of the man that, was, that it was uh, given that to? Was, I think it's a Henry Dundas. Sir Henry. Uh, number two, how far is uh, Cambridge from, uh, from Oxford? Uh, Cambridge is about 75 miles from Oxford. Number uh, one, how far is Cambridge from uh, Oxford? It's about 70 miles northwest of London. Uh, I'm sorry, from, from... I beg your pardon? From Oxford, you said? From Oxford. Oh, about uh, 70 miles, yes. 70? Yes. Uh, number uh, three, who was Newman? Newman? Yes. Never heard of him. Monique Van Voren. Well, I'd like to find out who was Newman, number one. I'm afraid I don't know. <laughs> number two? Newman was a scholar of Cambridge who uh, was a judge during one of the revolutions in England. Number three, how would you address a lord? Uh, in what sense? How would... <laughs> <laughs> when Not you don't formally. know him too well, when um, you would address him in the so? polite form, in the polite form, in the regular form, just like you would address a king, there's a special word to address a king, there's one to address um, a lord. I think you'd say, sir. Uh, number one, how would you address his wife? Lady. Number two, what is the dean of Cambridge University? What is the dean? What is his name? Uh, I don't know his name. Tom Poster. Thank you, bud. That's funny, you know. Uh, number one, are you uh, a member of the House of Lords? No, I'm not. Oh, that's too bad. I was going to compliment you on your gin. <laughs> Number three, as a tally man in the lumber company, could you tell me what the, uh, what uh, LDM stands for? Light, medium. No, I can't, no. Yep. LDM. Do you know what LDM means, uh, number one, I'm please? I'm afraid I don't. Okay. Number, number two... What is the hand tool used to move logs by, by a lumberman called? He uses his hands with number a pair of gloves. Number three, do you know the name of the tool? Uh, no, I don't. Number one? 
Put a pick. Number two, you just still don't want to tell me the name of the tool? I still say he uses his hands with a pair of heavy gloves. Yes, and what's the name of the tool that he uses to move logs? <laughs> a hand tool. To, you, to move logs? Yes. Oh, I don't know. Thank you. Molly Bergen. Uh, number two, uh, someday you will be the, uh, the Earl of uh, Ronald Shea, is that right? That is correct. Well, if you turned out to be a girl, what would you be? Uh. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> well, no, uh, I mean, what would your future be? Uh, uh... Bleak. <laughs> the girls don't end up with anything if they've got a whole line. No title, if that's what no you mean. No title at all. No. Uh, that's it. No, but I'm not. That's you, time. Right. time to vote. So without consultation, will you kindly mark your ballot, panel? And in so doing, of course, select number one, number two, or number three. The team of challenges will, as usual, receive $250 for every incorrect vote. Everybody marked? Okay, Polly, all set. For whom did you vote? I voted for number two uh, because he seemed so happy not to be a girl. <laughs> <laughs> Don Amici, who's your choice? Well, I, I, this is probably wrong because he was the one that said Dundas. The other two said Dundas. Uh, but I don't know. I just uh, I can't feel it's one. I just have to think probably two, probably. Monique, which one do you think is the real one? Well, I vote for number two because, first of all, he's got beautiful blue eyes. I like uh -oh. blue eyes. <laughs> and uh, second, it's because he answered uh, a question by saying he did not know us. I think that if he was lying, he would have made up an answer. <laughs> well, fair enough for a reason. Tom Poston? I voted for number two also, Bud. Uh, I have a few reasons. I think his tie might be uh, helpful in telling us that he is a, a member of an English club. And uh, a couple of other things that he said made me think that he was in the right. Okay, there you have it. If you're keeping your own scores at home, then mark yours down now. Play fair with it and see as we reveal which is the real one and see whether you are right or wrong, along with our panel. So may I ask, in order to find out which one is the real one, will the real Lord Mark Dundas please stand up? <laughs> Pull them right down the line. All right. Number one, would you tell us your real name and what you do, sir? My name is Richard Rawlings, and I am an airline representative here in New York. <laughs> and number two, what is your real name and what do you do? My name is Jeremy Rakes. Uh, I was born in Argentina, and I'm a copywriter here in New York for J. Walter Thompson. You're also a good actor. That's a score that's easy to tally because every, every single answer was incorrect. At $250 each, that makes up a total of $1,000, gentlemen, which makes rather sweet music, I'm sure you'll agree. On your way out, uh, you will find, of course, that there is the usual little gift for you of a year's supply of rice instant lather. I'd like to tell one little uh, uh, anecdote about Lord Dundas, who had, I guess you might call it, a rather shattering experience on his first day in New York. I don't know if he knows that I know this. But it's customary in English hotels, as some of you may know, to leave your shoes outside the door of your bedroom at night, and they are picked up and polished and returned the next morning. So when Lord Dundas checked in at the Victoria Hotel, he put his shoes out, and uh, the next morning, somebody had walked off with them. <laughs> I guess you can manage a new pair of shoes out of the $1,000 from Aris. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed your visit. We enjoyed having Thank you here. Good night and good luck. Now, panel, let's meet our next team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Fred Lalone. What is your name, please? My name is Fred Lalone. What is your name, please? My name is Fred Lalone. Again, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this second affidavit? I, Fred Lalone, am a member and the organizer of the Sierra Madre Search and Rescue Team of Sierra Madre, California. This is a group of volunteers, men who hold other regular jobs, who are dedicated to the search for and rescue of missing and injured persons in the mountains. 
We use all kinds of rescue equipment, including helicopters and bloodhounds. We also attempt to educate the public in the rules of mountain safety and survival. To date, the Sierra Madre Search and Rescue Team has saved the lives of 285 people. Signed, Fred Lalone. Again, panel, we have three gentlemen, all claiming to be the same one. This time, Fred Lalone, organizer of the Sierra Madre Search and Rescue Team. We'll start this round of cross-examination with our guest, Monique Van Voren. Monique? Number one, how far is the Sierra Madre from the Sierra Nevada? Oh, I'd say about 150 miles. Number two? About 150 miles. Number three, could you tell me what is the altitude required so you do not have any trouble with oxygen? Approximately uh, above 11,000 feet. Number one? I'd say about 11,000 feet. Above that, you're going to have trouble, yes. Number two, what are the bloodhounds necessary for in the search? Uh, for tracing purposes, the people, uh, when they're lost, we give them the scent, and they follow the scent. In 60% of the cases, they uh, do a very good job. Number three, do you use helicopter at night? No coppers at night. Tom Poston, please. Thank you, Bud. Uh, number three, can uh, a bloodhound really track down a person? Yes, sir. You know, when I was a kid, my family had a bloodhound, and uh, several times a week they'd send me out to look for him. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. He was an English bloodhound, and he drank a lot of House of Lords gin. Oh, boy. <laughs> Tell me, I, you know, I, number two, I've been dying to get out to California, especially the last couple of weeks. I hear it's really beautiful out there. But maybe you could tell me how far and from where to where do the Sierra Madres uh, go? Where do they stretch from where to where? Sierra Madres stretch approximately from Pasadena uh, to San Bernardino. Thank you. Uh, uh, num number one. Uh, do you know how to fly a helicopter? I am not licensed, but I can if I have to, uh, if there's an emergency, yes. What controls would you move to go upward in a climbing turn to the left? Upward in a climbing turn to the left? Uh, I couldn't demonstrate, Mr. Post, without having equipment. Some of that there. House of Lords awesome. Gin, maybe. Uh, Polly Bergen. Uh, number what two, you... what is, uh, what's the longest search you ever had? 23 days. 20... Did you find him? Found him in Salt Lake City. <laughs> <laughs> well, did he walk all that way? Was he not lost? Or I guess he wanted to get lost from everybody. <laughs> uh, uh, number three, uh, when, you're, uh, when you've been out searching for someone who is lost, have any of your searchers ever gotten lost? Not that I know of, ma'am. No? Uh, number one, it says, I, I mean, I've always read that if you're lost, uh, if you find the North Star, that that will sort of uh, help you find out which direction is which. What if it's a rainy night? Uh, you're not going to find Well, it could be a rainy night. Indeed. Uh, 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 we, have, we always recommend that if anyone is, anyone is lost in the mountains to stay in one spot during the night, rain, shine, snow, no matter what. Don Amici. Uh, number three, where is Sierra Madre? Sierra Madre is located in Southern California, about 18 miles east of L.A. Uh, is, number two, is, uh, is there a monastery in Sierra Madre? Yes, uh, there is. Uh, Passionate's Fathers. Uh, number three, uh, 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 what, 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 is their main, what do they main, do mainly at this monastery? Well, uh, I believe most of the monasteries that I know of is uh, on retreat, something like that. Uh, number uh, uh, one, how are most people injured in the mountains? Mostly from falls. That's it. Once again, it's time to vote. So we'll break in on that fall, and without consultation, will you please mark your ballots, panel? In so doing, you may select, as usual, number one, number two, or number three. Everybody mark? Okay, Polly, for whom did you vote this time? Well, it's probably number two, but I voted for number three because uh, he looked like number three should be he. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first time, you see, I, I picked number three when they were standing up there, and then I went away from him, and this time I picked number three while he was standing up there, that and I didn't it. dare change. 
The oxygen is rarer up there. Yeah. Don, your vote. I voted for number three also. It's pure guess. If I knew the answer, uh, I'd probably vote for someone else. Monique? <laughs> I, I voted for number three because my hunch was to vote for number one, but I know that my hunches are always wrong, so I vote for number three <laughs> because he answered correctly on the Sierra Madre location. See, you're very confused. <laughs> 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 Come on, hot kettle. Okay, Tom Poston. I voted here, it says, for uh -oh. number three. Uh -oh. Now, I think that it's really oh, between we'll one and two. <laughs> but uh, in my opinion, the real number three is on the right end there. All right, there you have it now. Unanimous this time as it was the first time. First time wrong, will it be right this time? Are you right at home? Let's check and see, shall we? Just discover which one of these three gentlemen is the real organizer of the Sierra Madre search and rescue team. So will the real Fred Lalonde please stand up. Thank you, sir, very much. If they were hunches, they were good ones, oh, and they paid off. never had someone who looked like the someone they were supposed to be on the afternoon. <laughs> I think he has congratulations coming from everybody for that wonderful thing he's organized. Well, work we here. do, too. We'll give him a hand. <laughs> Number one, you tell us your real name, sir, and what you actually do? Uh, my real name is George Wisner. I'm an advertising salesman for House and Home Magazine. <laughs> And number two, tell us your real name and what you do, please, sir. My name is Robert Williams, and I'm general manager of Mercury Messenger Service here in New York City. Well, unfortunately, uh, there were no incorrect votes. But in a case like that, Arid extends to you not only his congratulations and thanks for being with us, but $150. Also, on your way out, you will find a year's supply of rise and ladder for each of you. Hope you had fun. We did. Good night and good luck to you. Now, panel, let's meet our third team of challengers. What is your name, please? My name is Irene Irina Wasserkort. What is your name, please? My name is Irina Wasserkort. What is your name, please? My name is Irina Wasserkort. Again, panel, will you follow along on this affidavit? I, Irene Wassercourt, am the 1959 hot dog queen. <laughs> Appropriately enough, I am from Frankfurt, Germany. I was selected for this honor from among 128 girls by the American consulate in Frankfurt. During July, which has been designated as Hot Dog Month, I toured 30 American cities in the interest of the Frankfurter industry. Although my reign as hot dog queen is over, I am not returning to Germany. While on the tour, I met an American boy in a swimming pool. He proposed the next day, and I accepted. We are to be married in the fall. Signed, Irene Wasserkort. <laughs> Three pretty young ladies this time, panel, all claiming to be Irene Wasserkort, 1959 hot dog queen. All comfortable and ready to play our game? All right, let's start this round with Polly Bergen. Polly. Well, first of all, I think it's a mean trick that you knew I just came from Europe and I didn't go to Germany, so you have someone from Germany. <laughs> and I studied everywhere I went. I looked at all the street signs. Number Sorry, two, no. where's the Arc de Triomphe from Paris? <laughs> <laughs> well, I went to Paris. I know you did. <laughs> Do you, number two? Champs-Élysées. <laughs> uh, see? <laughs> huh? Number three, uh, where's the Place de Concorde? <laughs> I've never been to Paris. Well, uh, number one, uh, what's the difference between a Knackwurst and a Bratwurst? Uh, well, I think uh, the Knackwurst is uh, beef and pork, and uh, the Bratwurst is more fat than uh, the Knackwurst. <laughs> Don Amici. Number two, uh, where is Bavaria from Frankfurt? It's uh, more south. Number three, how much south? Uh, not too much. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, 
As a matter of fact... Not too much for what? As a matter of fact, on the map, it's only about that much. <laughs> Uh, number uh, uh, one, where is the German consulate in New York? Uh, I, I frankly don't know. Uh, number two, uh, uh, what, would a, what would a stranger, would a stranger in Germany address you as Frau or Fräulein? Fräulein. Uh, number three, would a stranger in Germany address you as Frau or Fräulein? Fräulein. Uh, number, uh, number one, what is uh, Bad Gastein? Uh. Number two, what is Bad Gastein? A resort place. Monique Van Voren. Uh, number three, could you tell me which is the nearest town to Frankfurt? Um, let me see. Please, Biden. Uh, what do you call, what is the other name, number one, what is the other name for the Frankfurter in German? Uh, Bockwurst. Number two? Bockwurst. Verstehen Sie, was ich sage? Ja, natürlich. <laughs> Carry on. All I can say is, there's Mussetvaz Gesche in this bar. Tom Poston, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don Gesche. Number two, you met a man in a swimming pool. Yes. And he subsequently asked you to marry him. You must have made quite a splash. What did you... <laughs> is that more simple? What do you expect, Groucho Marx? I'm only one quarter of this panel. <laughs> Tell me, number one, what does... Frankfurt mean the name that is. Uh, it, I, th I think it's named after the Franken. Number two. Oh, uh, that's it. Time to vote once again. Will you please mark your hot dog, your ballot for uh, the one you think is the right one, and in so doing, select number one, number two, or number three. Okay, has everyone voted? No, of course not. Holly, vote, please. <laughs> All right. Okay, whom did you vote this time? Well, I voted for number one. If I'd have had a little more time, I would have probably voted for number two, which means it's probably number three, but I, I didn't get a chance to ask number one anything about Paris, so oh, I'm not sure, yeah. but I think it was. You want to change your vote, Molly? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, Donna Michi, your vote. I voted for number two, because she answered in German so beautifully, which I don't understand. <laughs> I think she said I don't understand German, Don. And, well, uh, um, Monique, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three, because she's a very pretty girl, and also because she said that Miss Baden was near Frankfurt. And Tom? Voted for number two, but <laughs> I had to, time was running out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, once again, we've declared ourselves, and we'll check on it right now. And if, as I said before, you're playing at home, Play fair with us and don't change your vote now as we discover which one of these ladies is the real 1959 hot dog queen. So will the real Irene Vossercourt please stand up. Thank you very much. You see what you can get when you travel to Europe and yeah, see all those things? Yeah, that makes all the difference <laughs> in the world. Aren't you glad you didn't change your vote? Yeah. <laughs> Number two, would you tell us your real name and what you do, please? My name is Vera Vera. I'm from Holland. I'm a showgirl and I work now in the show from Little Happen at Stupefine Jones in Rye, New York. Stupefine Jones up in Rye. <laughs> uh, number three, your real name, please, and what you do. My name is Kathy Hamilton. I was born in Estonia. I used to work at an advertising agency as a secretary, and I'm now a model. Well, we thank you, and it was a good round. Let's see, we had it all mixed up here. There were one, two, three incorrect votes, you'll be happy to hear, at $250 each for a total of $750 from Arid. And ladies, on your way out, you will find a gift package of all the Cardiff Fine products for each of you. Good night to you, and good luck, and thank you for being with us. Thank you. It always seems too bad that our time runs out as quickly as it does. Uh, Monique, I want to thank you very much for visiting our panel tonight. Oh, well, thank you very much for asking me. We enjoyed having you here. Also, I understand that you're going to star in the United States Steel Hour, aren't you? O August 26th? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll be watching. Thank you very much. Come back and see us again soon. All Guess right. that's about all, panel. And uh, enjoy your next trip to Germany, Polly. Yes. <laughs> Good night, all. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night.
Bud Collier saying goodnight from Arid Cream Deodorant and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to Tell the Truth is Mark Hudson, Bill Hudson production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Virgin Town by Wilma.